Good morning, SBC. Happy Tuesday morning to you. And I hope that you have arisen today with the idea that you're going to press on into the world that God has given to you, the vision that God has placed before you. I had this wonderful opportunity just a few weeks back when I was down in Florida with my family, we went down to Florida to take some vacation time and we went to Disney World. We went to go feed the mouse. And so as we went down there and we got to go and ride the rides and eat the food and, and do all that stuff, what was interesting is uh, we met some folks from Hopkinsville down there. That was really cool. But the other thing that I actually really look forward to is I knew I'd get to catch up with a couple of young ladies who I had an opportunity to pastor uh, in the ministry. Now, of course, they've gotten older. They're, they're now uh, mature young ladies, and they're doing well in this world. And they, they work down there around the area of Walt Disney. And so we got to catch up with them. And while I was talking with one of them, uh, I noticed that she had on her forearm um, the words, do the next right thing. Now, if you know anything about Disney, that's a quote from uh, the Frozen movie, uh, number two. It's the sequel. And in it, there's a young lady who's down in a cavern, and, and it seems like a dark and dismal place. And in it, she's only feeling the loss and the despair that she has gone through. And, and she has the words that come to her from someone who advised her earlier, do the next right thing. When you don't know what else to do, you just do the next right thing thing. And so she had those words on her arm. And it's a good phrase. It's an encouraging phrase. No question about that. But while we were there and we were talking, I was able to share with her about a man named the Apostle Paul, who actually didn't simply um, quote those words, but he lived those words with his life. You, you see, the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians is in a dark jail cell. He's been incarcerated, not, not for a crime that he's committed, but, but for because of persecution that has come against him for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he could be there in the well of despair. You know, he could be saying, woe is me. Why has God not loved me more? Why has God not helped me more? Why has God not assisted me more. But that's not what the Apostle Paul does. He writes the book of Philippians, which is one of the most encouraging books in all of the New Testament. And in that book, we see what drives him to keep moving forward. And it's this. He says there in Philippians in chapter 3, this phrase, not that I have already obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on to the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. When you became saved, when you gave your heart to Christ, he gave you a vision and a goal and a destination. And friend, I don't know where you're at. You may be in the darkest of caves right now, and you may have suffered the greatest of losses. Or perhaps you're on the top of some mountain and you have finished out the greatest of victories. Listen, I don't want you just to sit there. Don't, don't allow yourself to simply sit there. Because what Satan desires for every believer to do, whether successful or in despair, is to remain where you're at. Just sit down and do nothing. That's his goal. And so be like the Apostle Paul. Take hold of the day that is in front of you. Take hold of the future that is unfolding before you. Don't let your past define who you are in this moment. Let the vision that God has given be your definition. Let the vision that God has placed before you become your call and your drive. Let today be a day that you grab with both hands because you are pressing on to the goal for which Christ has called you heavenward. Well, I tell you, it was such a joy to catch up with those two wonderful young ladies down in Florida. And it was really a lot of fun to be able to talk with them about the Apostle Paul and the call that God puts upon all of our lives. And so I pray today, whether you're in Florida or whether you're somewhere else in the U.S. or if you're right here in Hopkinsville, today as you roll out of bed, 
I pray that you take hold of what God has before you. Forgetting what is behind, press on to the goal that Christ has placed before you. Make it a great day, SBC. And I'll look forward to catching up with you again next Tuesday, right here at Second Baptist Church.